Oh, isn't the summer lovely? And what better way to celebrate the summer than to take a look at one of gaming's most iconic plants, the piranha plant from Super Mario Bros. I'm Kaihatsu, and today I'm going to be taking a look at the design of this. Whoa! Now, where were we? Oh yes, today I'm going to be taking a look at the design of the piranha plant. The piranha plant was first introduced in Super Mario Bros. for the NES, and appeared as a green spotted Venus flytrap looking plant. However, nowadays the piranha plant is coloured red with white spots. Although at first glance this snappy plant seems to be based off of the Venus flytrap, I have reason to believe that it also shares a lot of traits with another set of insectivorous plants. But first, let's have a look at the traits that a regular piranha plant possesses. A regular piranha plant has two leaves sprouting from the bottom of the stalk, with a large head at the top, which, after the original Super Mario game, was red with white spots. They also have what appear to be large white fangs and some large white lips, and depending on what game they're in, they may also have a tongue. If we compare the common piranha plant with a Venus flytrap, we can see that they have a similar head shape, and the fangs of the piranha plant could be seen to be similar to the cilia on the edge of the flytraps. However, there are a number of other traits possessed by the piranha plant that don't seem to be shared by the Venus flytrap. For example, these white spots, and of course, the two leaves at the bottom of the plant. I believe that these traits come from another family of insectivorous plants, Saraceniaceae, or Saracenia as they're more commonly referred to. Many people also refer to these plants as pitcher plants, but the Nepenthesiae family of pitcher plants, which is unrelated and grows on the opposite side of the world in Asia, is also lumped into this name. So I'll refer to these as Saracenia for the rest of the video. Saracenia are passive traps, as they have no moving parts like the Venus flytrap, which is considered an active trap. Saracenias are filled with a digestive fluid which is very similar to the one found in our stomachs. The traps are made up of a special leaf folded into a tube shape, which attracts insects with nectar. When the insect arrives to take the nectar, the slipperiness of the peristome makes the insect fall down into the pitcher, and the microscopic downward pointing hairs on the inside of the pitcher prevent the insect from getting out. It then slowly drowns, and is then digested. Some other members of the Saracenia family, such as Darlingtonia californica, Saracenia citicina, and Saracenia minor, have small white windows on their pitchers, which are meant to act as false exits so that any prey that enters the traps will get confused about which way is out, after being unable to exit through the hole that they came in through due to the design of the traps. After slowly exhausting themselves by struggling to find their way out, the prey will fall into the pit below and drown. Or, in the case of the Saracenia citicina, sharp downward pointing hairs force the insects to move further down into the plant, as turning back would mean getting impaled. As it approaches the base of the trap, it enters an area with digestive fluid, where it gets stuck, and slowly dies. Jeez, that would be such a horrible way to go. Just thinking about it makes me shudder. Anyways, I believe that the white spots on the piranha plant are meant to serve the same purpose. And, I also think that it's possible that the large white lips of the piranha plant are a type of peristome. The leaves and the lump at the bottom of the plant's stem could have been inspired by the fact that the rhizome of the Saracenia plant can sometimes be seen sticking out of the top of the soil, as well as the fact that during the winter, Saracenias produced regular leaves in order to photosynthesize while not losing energy by producing traps. If we also take a look at the locations that piranha plants grow in, we can see a correlation with insectivorous plants, as these types of plants grow in marshes and swamps, where the soil has very few minerals and nutrients in it. Throughout Mario games, piranha plants are seen in pipes, which would house perfect conditions for these types of plants, as they would most likely be waterlogged, which explains why there are so many piranha plants underground and in sewers in the Mushroom Kingdom. But you're probably also wondering how piranha plants end up surviving in cold environments like these. Well, Saracenias, Venus flytraps, and sundew plants can all survive in cold frosty conditions, and one variety of the Saracenia, the Saracenia puperia, grows all the way up to the tree line in northern Canada, and is very good at adapting to cold climates. There have even been small groups of these plants showing up in marshes in Ireland, moors in Scotland, and also in the Netherlands and Sweden. Nepenthes, however, would need to stay in a warm, humid climate to survive. Like a rainforest. 
Another surprising fact about the piranha plants is that they probably aren't intentionally looking to eat Mario. Insectivorous plants are often called carnivorous plants in the media, but don't let that fool you. These plants have evolved over time to catch insects, and eating anything bigger may not be a good idea. Some species of larger Nepenthes, such as the Nepenthes raja, sometimes catch small rodents, but this is not intentional and would most likely result in the killing of the trap, due to the overabundance of salts and minerals. Too much at once could kill the whole plant. If a piranha plant was to eat Mario, all of the salts and minerals present in his body would probably end up killing the piranha plant itself. So, is the piranha plant really based off of more than one plant? Or is it just the result of the carnivorous plant stereotype? Leave your answers in the comments below. And before you go, I have a question for you, dear viewers. I have been growing my own insectivorous plants for many years, and right now I have a Saracenia puparia without a name. So I want you to come up with one. Comment your name ideas below, and in the next video, I'll pick the best ones to be pitted against each other in a vote. See you next time.